Hello everyone. So now we are going to discuss about the tracheophyta. Tracheophyta are basically uh, the group of plants which have the characteristic of uh, which are you know uh, these are first and foremost the most successful land plants. Most successful land plants as a num as um, due to a number of characteristics which they possess. Number one is well developed vascular system. Uh, as successful land plants, what they really have developed is vascular. Um, bundles. Vascular bundles are the bundles which are required for every plant for you know the transport of materials from one part of the plant to another part of the plant. Let's suppose it's it's uh, it's for the transport of uh, minerals. There is um, the vascular bundle xylem for the transport of minerals and uh, water, while for the transport of um, organic material we use fluid. So these are the two vascular bundles which are responsible for the transport. Now. When it comes to uh, tracheophyta, uh, they have developed these vascular bundles, which are not even though that, which are you know the basic characteristic which allow them to gain support on terrestrial habitats as well as um, you know combat the need for more water within a dry environment. Secondly, they have developed a vexi cuticle. They have developed a vexi cuticle around their body, which uh, prevents them from losing more of the water within the hot environment and um, they have also after which you know uh, they have also uh, well differentiated roots stems and leaves which allow them to adapt in those conditions apart from which um, they have you know what we call as the development of seed but that is in higher tracheophytes um, the seeded vascular plants. So we are going to discuss that in our next slide. Uh, for now, these are the major adaptations. Apart from which, they have the characteristic of they have the development of non sterile they have the development of sterile cells. Sterile cells are developed all around their reproductive organs which help them to which help them to prevent the terrestrial conditions. Now these are some of the adaptations of the tracheophytes. Now when we come to talk about the structure of tracheophytes, sterile jacket cells actually. So these sterile jacket cells uh, help them to prevent the jacket cells. These sterile jacket cells are responsible for the protection of uh, for preventing the loss of water desiccation in uh, these plants in the spore in in the reproductive organs as, as gamete in here. Now, uh, these tracheophytes are classified into four major uh, divisions or groups. Uh, the first division is Xeropsida. Xeropsida is the division which is uh, the most primitive one which uh, you know includes rootless sporangia what does that mean this means that they do not have well differentiated root and leaves but they do have um, you know uh, underground stem which we call as rhizome and an erect and an erectile uh, rhizome and an alien part of rhizome which we call as erectile rhizome but still that is what we call as the stem, but so we can call this as underground stem, which is rhizome, and erectile stem, which is the upright stem, which makes the plant stand upright. Now, this is the structure formed, apart from which, when it comes to roots, instead of roots, we do have rhizoids. Unicellular rhizoids are attached to the uh, rhizome, which makes uh, enables them to absorb water and minerals from the ground, while on the other hand side, uh, the erectile stem has, um, you know, a small venless outgrowths, which are named as small venless outgrowths are there, which are photosynthetic and perform photosynthesis. Now, apart from this, there is another structure as well that I would like to share, uh, which is the sporangia as the reproductive structure. Since these are the sporophytes, sporangia is a reproductive structure which is uh, you know holded by a sporangiospore 
so uh, sporangia is present as well in which the spores are uh, present now in further classes we is going we are going to discuss that how these spores are um, you know differentiated uh, whether these are homospores or heterospores so that's another concept we are going to cover in the next class so for now for now onwards this is sporangia in which the spores are present apart from which when it comes to uh, their existence they are existed in the environment but the thing is they um, uh, most of these are extinct and the organism in the extinct group are named as uh, um, you know xylopsida of group rhinia within these we have examples of cooksonia phanophytons and ornophytons or neophytons these are the examples of group rhinia, rhinia which have been extinct now there are two living genus which are named as Celotum and Mesipteris. Mesipteris. These are the two living genus, are Celotum and Mesipteris. Two living genus, Celotum and Mesipteris. A picture of it is also visible in the diagram. Celotum, which is the living genus. Now when it comes to the gametophyte, gametophyte is thalloid, which um, you know is not differentiated underground and colorless and has got a mycorrhizal association mycorrhizal uh, association with uh, you know a mycorrhizae which is a, a fungus as a result of which it has increased uh, growth, uh, growth rate because the mycorrhiza uh, provides it with nutrients and minerals from the soil and uh, on the other hand side the uh, mycorrhiza itself gets Shelter from the from the gametophyte due to which uh, both of these uh, form a symbiotic relation, which is why we call this as a mycorrhizal symbiotic association. Now, example of this is Lucilotum and Mesipteris. This is what uh, we call as uh, Sidopsida. But when it comes to the evolution of leaves, evolution of leaves. Um, occurred in um, the early Silopsida and the first leaves having uh, plants were the Lycopsida, Lycopodes. We are going to discuss about that in the next video.